Hello and welcome to Unit 3. In this unit, we're going to look at some basic AngularJS features. In the last unit, we looked at how Angular solves the MVC problem and we actually set up a simple Angular application. In this unit, we're going to explore some of the basic features of Angular a little bit more. There are some features that we get out of the box, like we saw with NGDF. So we're going to see what we can do with some of the out-of-the-box features and the kind of functionality that we can build into our client applications. So we'll start by looking at some of the Angular directives that we've already covered. So the directives we covered were, we start with ng-app, right? ng-app is a, a directive that comes out of the box with Angular, and it helps to auto-bootstrap an Angular JS application. This is how you actually tell Angular that this is an Angular JS application. Just adding the Angular script into your HTML will not do. You have to designate some DOM element, some element in the DOM tree to say Angular, this is the root of the Angular JS application. So go ahead and use that to bootstrap the Angular application. So this designates what's referred to as the root element of the application. Angular is going to be concerned only with that node and the children below it. Anything that you add outside the node, either on a different branch or above it or whatever, will not be affected by Angular. Right? Notice also that I've mentioned in the first point that ng-app auto bootstraps an AngularJS application. What do I mean by that? There is a bootstrap process that you need to do in order to bootstrap, in order to kickstart an AngularJS application, you don't actually have to do this if there is just one ng-app in your page. That's what happened, right? We just had one ng-app and we didn't do any bootstrap process. Things just worked out of the box. That's because there was just one ng-app. If you have more, it'll still work, but you're gonna have to do a manual bootstrap, right? So you can have multiple ng-apps, you can have multiple Angular applications per page. But once you have more than one ng app, Angular will not know which one to bootstrap and in which order. So you're going to have to do a manual bootstrap. I'm not going to cover manual bootstrap at this point. You can actually look it up if you're interested. But let me tell you, I have been coding in Angular for like a couple of years now, and I've never once had to do a manual bootstrap. It's a very rare situation. Most of the times you're going to have just one HTML and one Angular app in that HTML, right? Okay, so that was the first directive we learned. What was the next directive? We learned about ng-init. ng-init is a directive that you use to create initiali initialization logic, right? You create initialization code that executes when the page loads, when the Angular application is bootstrapped and it hits that ng-init directive. Uh, you can use this to evaluate expressions. We did evaluate expressions, right? We created a variable called r of t and we assign the value to it. So you can use this, uh, you know, you can use ng-init to do that. Uh, but now that I've told you what ng-init is and what you need to use it for, let me also tell you not to use it. It's not best practice. I used ng-init as a very convenient way to demonstrate executing a piece of logic uh, in your Angular application, but this is just for demonstration purposes. We are never ever gonna be using ng-init again in this course. There's probably just one valid use of ng in it, and that's inside a loop, which I'm going to cover later. But you, you don't want to use ng in it. There are actually better ways to write initialization code, and we'll cover that later. All right. The third directive we used was ng if. It's kind of like an if condition in your code. You could selectively show or hide certain elements in your application. More accurately, this selectively removes or recreates portions of DOM based on an expression, right? You assign the ngf attribute to a particular DOM element. Angular evaluates the expression of that ngf, figures out if that's a true value or a false value. And depending on that, it either adds that element to the DOM tree or it just removes it from the DOM tree, all right? So that's the key here. I'm Placing focus on this because of what's going to come up in the future, I'm going to have to contrast that with this. But this is what happens with ngf. If the ngf expression evaluates to false, remember that Angular just removes that element from the DOM tree. It doesn't even exist in the DOM tree. Once that expression evaluates to true, 
Angular is going to put that ex put that node back into the DOM tree. 